He is the author of Mastermind Dinners, the father of a five-year-old daughter who battled back from the brink of bankruptcy to redefine business and personal relationships. A one-on-one -on -one conversation with Jason Gaynard here on the Reinvention Chronicles. Jason Gaynard, we are outside the Archangel Summit, one of the premier speaking events anywhere in North America. It's here in Toronto this year again. Uh, Jason, you uh, uh, keynoted on the stage last year. We had Gary Vaynerchuk, Seth Godin, Robin Sharma, Dan Martell, our mutual friend. And this I found a way to squeeze myself on stage. Yeah, <laughs> Jason got on stage and delivered a message that I never forgot. And I think anyone who subscribes to the Reinvention Chronicles would love to hear this because this is the guy who is really reinventing, redefining how to build effective business and personal relationships. And I think, Jason, so much of what uh, compelled uh, so many people to uh, be inspired by your talk is your story about the brink of bankruptcy. Can you, can you kind of share that with everyone? Yeah, um, I mean, the quick version is basically after being an entrepreneur for, for seven years, um, I realized I built the business I hated to enable me to buy things I didn't need to impress people I didn't like. And I felt like I was stuck on this hamster wheel that I simply couldn't get off. And I had reached my model of success, which was to be financially successful, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and to the point where I was 22 times, uh, my income for one year, 2011, was 22 times the national average income for a Canadian male. And that was bothersome to me when it happened, because in most business circles, that'd be celebrated. But for me, it was bothersome, because I'm like, I'm not 22 times happier than the average male. I'm not 22 times healthier. Three years prior, when I was 22, 23, actually I had kidney complications because of stress. So I realized that money and happiness scale very differently. And as I climbed up Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I started to ask myself questions like, why am I here? Will I be remembered? How many people show up to my funeral? And simply- All the legacy type questions. Absolutely, yeah. yeah okay. I was, was not happy with the answers I was giving myself and I just realized I wanted to climb a certain mountain. I got to the top of that mountain. And I'm like, this is the wrong mountain. <laughs> so I became comfortable with the idea of scaling that business down to zero. Uh, because if I wanted to sell it, which it was in a position for acquisition, I'd have to stay in it for another year, and I just couldn't do it to my soul, personally. Um, and uh, while scaling it down, unfortunately, two things happened that were beyond my control that landed me a quarter million dollars in debt in August of 2012, uh, and that was my rock bottom. I mean, I was... Do you remember the day, the day, the rock bottom day? I actually do. Um, I do. <laughs> I think I'm actually tearing up. I don't know if it's the wind. Um, it's the wind. <laughs> There's was, a real breeze here and there's a helicopter, but really everyone yeah. can remember. I don't care no, it's, who it's you actually, are, Jason. Uh, I anyone who's traveled the road of reinvention hit a rock bottom I day. didn't share this on stage, uh, and I haven't shared this with too many people since, but I was actually driving into the city, um, into Toronto, and uh, I was driving, you can either go, there's a split in the road, uh, and you can either get into the city through the lakeshore and drive along the lake, or you can go in through the, through the highway. And they put a fresh concrete median, and I remember to myself there was a decision that was made that wasn't a conscious decision that I was going to actually drive my vehicle into the concrete median. Uh, and when I decided that, a sense of peace just overwhelmed me, that it would soon be over. And as I drove towards that concrete median, I remember uh, looking down at the steering wheel and seeing that airbag <laughs> text in its very distinct font. And I'm like, with my luck, this airbag will save my life. And not only will I be a failure as a husband, failure as a father, failure as an entrepreneur, but I would have failed at killing myself as well. And I ended up pulling over and kind of regrouping. And um, I mean, it's something I talk, talk a lot about because I still have judgment towards the notion of suicide, but I know entrepreneurs are 30% more susceptible to suicide than, mm -hmm. than most people. Um, you know, the highs are high and the lows are low. And uh, yeah, it was a, that was the day, I think, when it really kind of came into focus. And what, what what I find utterly fascinating is you hit this point where you realize the world can take away so many things, but the one thing they can't take away, Jason, is... Is relationships. Yeah. Um, I basically, from that, I, I had an, an invitation. Somebody posted, uh, a friend of mine posted on Facebook uh, the ability to, to go to a Seth Godin 
uh, conference or a mini seminar that he does in, in New York City. I didn't know what it was about, but I've been a few, huge fan of his work and never had an opportunity to kind of interact with him in person. So I decided to go and it turned out the theme of it was the connection economy and how there's huge value connecting like-minded individuals. And because I felt so isolated at the time, um, I ended up doing these dinners where I'd invite eight entrepreneurs out for dinner with the core focus of connecting them. And the first one I did, I almost canceled two hours prior because I'm like, no, he's gonna see value in this. I think I completely wasted our time. But thankfully it turned out to be a great success. And I continued on with these dinners even though it made no sense. People thought I was crazy because I was paying for them out of pocket with the little credit I had left and I, I, mean, I couldn't make rent the following month. But to me, I was on the brink of bankruptcy and I, was, I thought that was the next step for me. And to what you said, I mean, I, I, the way I looked at it was the bank could take my car, they could take whatever measly assets I had left, but they couldn't take my relationships. So investing in myself and investing in my relationships were the two safest investments I could make back then. And I still think the same is true today for, for myself and for everybody. So I've really doubled down on relationships. I don't want to be presumptuous and we don't know each other well, but I do want to ask, do you consider yourself a networking expert in terms of, you know, being a connector and putting people together? That's question number one. Uh, yes and no. I'm not a huge fan of the, just the, the, the notion of networking as, okay. in the sense that like the, the term is used with like, you think of like sleazy and hot. Yeah. You, oh, you, you, think like of the, the, you think of the hop, cheesy yeah. wine and cheese business card swapping. Right. Yeah. Which I, we I very, both have no time for. Yeah, and I, I very much take the authentic, genuine approach. Like, you won't see me run up to a big person and take a selfie with them or anything like that. Um, I, I, I try to just treat everybody like, you know, genuine kind of friendships. And it uh, it has a great ROI to it from a business <laughs> perspective, but that's not why I do it. I genuinely love people and I love connecting with people. Um, and it's in today's society where, you know, we're, we're just swimming in contacts, but we're starving for connection. And that's that's you know the fate we we get fall into these like these these ego numbers of like how many Facebook friends we have or how many LinkedIn contacts we mm. have, but they're saying it doesn't matter how many friends you can count. It matters how many friends you can count on. Um, so you know when a lot of networkers are all about you know growing how many people they know and all that kind of stuff, I'm at a point where uh, the key to a strong network for me is subtraction and not addition. It's going deep with relationships not going wide so so I'm gonna take the networking label off the table because <laughs> we both really have we have our own struggles with that word sure, and, sure. And, and what it means but what I will do is and we can wrap it up this way Jason for anyone out there who's really thinking hard long and hard and they're serious about reinventing the way they establish connections okay yeah and building relationships the way you have what sort of what are the three words of advice or the three tips or I don't want it to be a how-to hound, but what no, no, sort no, of nuggets absolutely. could you share? So there's a, a few, I guess, unconventional things. So for me, at my point, at, at my stage of relationships, the key for me is, again, subtraction and not addition. But you have to, like, there's a saying by Warren Buffett that the difference between successful people and very successful people is you have to say, very successful people say no to almost everything, right? But you have to say yes to a bunch of things before you can say no to anything, right? Mm -hmm. So. You know, it does require you to go out there and be uncomfortable and meet a bunch of people. May, you may meet one incredible person out of 100, but you do that long enough, you really start to kind of build that, that great peer group. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, two really strong philosophies that I use that have worked phenomenal for me. And I mean, four years ago, I knew nobody. My wife and I got married in 2012, and I had two people in my bachelor party, my brother and my brother-in-law. I knew nobody. So all the success I've had in the last couple of years has been based on these these two real things. The first is that amazing people become increasingly amazing over time. Everybody wants to be connected with the Bridget Branson's of the world, mm. or the Gary Maxwell's, or the Dan Martell's, um, but they're busy individuals, right? I mean, they, they're not necessarily looking for more friends oftentimes, and there's a lot of noise there. For me, I really pride myself on finding the diamonds in the rough. Who are those up and comers that I can almost invest in them like someone would look at investing in a business? Find somebody who is undervalued and invest in them not financially, but with belief and with you know connections and how you can support them. That to me has been huge. And there's a lot of people I've met who are just quote unquote nobodies who are be you know sitting in the audience mm -hmm. at an event like this and now they're on stage in a very short period of time. Nicholas Kuzmich, yeah, who's the MC here, is phenomenal. Great storyteller. I met him three years ago. Wow. Um, he, he reached out to me. I ended up having lunch with him, and that was I don't say I was the beginning of that, but he started to really hit that inflection point, and the guy's killing it right now. So. 
amazing people keep becoming increasingly amazing over time. And then amazing people know other amazing people. So once you start having that core great group of people do things to like um, get more connected with who they're connected with. So a friend of mine, he'll buy like three hockey tickets. He'll go to the game and he'll invite a friend to bring a friend. Um, so there's a bunch of things you can do like that or dinners, founders dinners or um, we do mastermind dinners, basically the same thing that Dan does with founders dinners, where you invite you know eight people out for dinner, maybe you know three or four of them, tell them to bring mm -hmm. a friend, and you grow your network ex exponentially. And for me, I'm doing a dinner tonight with 22 people. It'll probably, and I mean, mind you, I'm gonna find an actual position where this makes sense now, but I mean, it'll cost me, I don't know, 1200 bucks, 1300 bucks. I did a dinner in Denver two weeks ago, uh, and it cost me you know three grand. And it, to me, it's laughable when I see that. I don't, I've never spent a penny on marketing. Everything's been word of mouth. And when I look at like how much I spend on that, on those relationships to have instant rapport with these people by you know treating them to dinner and that kind of stuff, to me it's it's the best investment you can make. So. You know, this has been this has been so valuable. How do people find your book? Uh, it's called Mastermind Dinners. Mastermind Dinners, yeah, it's on Amazon. Yeah. Um, and uh, coming out with a podcast called Community Made, which is basically challenging the notion of like the self-made man or self-made woman. That's how you know we all are. We're not self-made. We're community made in essence. Um, and uh, yeah, those are two ways. Well, listen, we could talk all day about this, <laughs> but uh, w thank you so much, Jason. I appreciate it. Jason name. Gaynard, uh, and hope hopefully uh, some of these ideas and thoughts will help you uh, think um, about new ways to recreate and reimagine the business, the life, the career that you deserve. <laughs> now you're looking too uncomfortable. No, I'm excited. Really? I got good energy this way. Your, okay, really? I feel like I'm talking to a bunch of like okay. baseball kids. Yeah, okay. All right, kids, All let's right. go. Okay, here we go. We're rolling. <laughs>